everybody. So today I'm really happy to have with us our friends, Jean and Carol, who are visiting from Alabama. So I thought I'd take advantage of Carol while she was here to show us some sort of traditional Southern dish. So today we are making what, Carol? We're making hummingbird cake. Which I had never heard of before. So where did this recipe even come from or originate? It was first published in 1978 in a Southern Living magazine. Uh, a lady from North Carolina had submitted it and it's so good it took off like wildfire and Southern Living today says it's their number one requested oh, recipe is right. yes, for the hummingbird cake. So this is your version? This is a recipe that. I have that came from my aunt who I believe got it out of Southern Living. And made her own adjustments to it Right, the and then passed it down and, hey, would you write it up for me? And they did. And Great. I've made it and haven't made it in a few years, but um, it doesn't last long once it's made. So a True sign of a good recipe. So what we're making today is actually, it'll seem a little bit fancy. It's not hard. It's no different than if you have one pan, but we're going to be making a three-layer cake, right. which is always fun. This is going to be just like senior year, except for funner. So what is the first thing that we need to do to get started? First, we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and then we're going to toast the pecans. Two cups of pecans, uh, on, just spread out on a jelly roll pan. About 10 minutes, you want to check them every three or four minutes, uh, move them around with a spatula. Uh, you'll start to smell them roasting. And okay. then when they're done, pull them out. Set aside a dozen or so for decorating the top of the cake, and the rest you want to chop. You want it all to be cool when you chop it. Okay, so we've, so we've got our pecans toasted, chopped, and we've got that set aside. And then what other prep work should we do first? The next thing is you want to um, grease and flour your cake pan. So we've got three nine-inch cake pans. Right. Okay, and so we're going to grease with what? A little vegetable shortening and uh, just plain flour. And I'm using a pastry brush, but if you don't have a brush, you can use a paper towel, right? right. And just spread it around. And then just sprinkle a little bit of flour in. Right. Shake the pan. Shake it all around till it gets to all of the sides. All of the bottom and the sides. Just roll it around. Do it over a, a sink, which is better so that you can get all of the extra flour out. And when it's all around, then you just want to dump it out and bang it on the side of the sink to get all the extra out. And it'll look like that when you're done. So we'll set that aside with our other two pans. And then we are going to wet. Start with our... We're going to start with the dry ingredients. You're okay. going to start with three cups of all-purpose flour. And then we're going to add in two cups of sugar. Now, what I love already about this recipe is that we are able to do it just in one bowl. We're just going to mix everything in one bowl, so we're going to do all of our dry ingredients first. What can I do to start getting something else ready while you're doing that? You can start um, chopping bananas. We want okay, how much do we need? Two cups of chopped bananas. You want them not bright yellow. This is great. So ripe, They're nice and ripe. ripe. Um, they will be a little soft, but you don't want them mashed. You do want them chopped because you want to have little pieces mm. of okay. banana in the cake. So Carol has recommended, and I'm going to try this using just a pastry cutter for quick and easy getting just the right size little chunks. If you don't have one, just use a knife. It's just yeah. as good, but this Anybody will be really fast. It. So not as ripe as you would normally want for a for banana, banana bread. bread. Okay, so I'll get those ready. It won't ready. hurt, but they'll be better if they're a little firm so that you have the pieces of Little them. bites of banana. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get the bananas ready while you finish with uh, right. the dry ingredients. We're going to go one teaspoon of salt, mix that in, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And just going to whisk it until you can see that it's thoroughly mixed. Okay, so it looks like you've got all of the dry ingredients all well blended. Right. And now what? Wet now ingredients? We're going to go with wet ingredients, which first is three eggs beaten. And one and a half cup of vegetable oil. Okay, I'm switching to a spatula because uh, you're not going to be able to whisk the eggs and the oil and the flour. And you do want it well blended. Okay, so you've added the eggs and the oil well combined. Oh yeah, that really gets really thick. Okay, and now you're going to add what? The rest of your wet now ingredients? We're gonna, right. We're going to add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Eight ounces of crushed 
pineapple undrained. You want the juice. So which is convenient because they come in that eight ounce can. Then we're gonna add the pecans. So you see how easy this is. Everything that just gets thrown into the one bowl all mixed together, which right. is a great recipe. Then we're gonna add our two cups of banana. So this is a really thick cake recipe, unlike others where you would pour it in. You look like you're gonna need to really scoop this in and divide it in. Now I'm wondering if, if somebody doesn't maybe have three nine inch cake pans, have you ever made it in any other pan? Like I have seen some cakes that you can either do in um, layers or maybe in a bunt pan. They are done sometimes in bunt pans. Do you I think, think this whatever could? you're comfortable with working with, whatever you have on hand. That's all there is to it. So we are gonna put this in our oven at 350 degrees for how long? 25 to 30 minutes, but we'll probably start checking it about 20 minutes. And then after they're baked, what we're going to do is remove them from the oven, let them cool for about 10 minutes or so, and then invert them out of the pans right. to let them cool completely. Yes, let them okay. cool on the rack. And that'll take uh, 45 minutes or so. And then we'll come back at that point and we're gonna make our cream cheese frosting and layer it and make it pretty. Right, put all three layers together. All right. Okay, so our three layers of cake have cooked. We've let them cool, flip them out of the pan, let them cool completely. And now we are gonna make our cream cheese frosting. So what do we need to do that? We're gonna start with two blocks of eight ounce cream cheese or two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. We're gonna mix it with one cup of butter. And both of these soften just room temperature. Powdered sugar ready? Yes, just sift two cups of powdered sugar. And for sifting, if you, you, know, you don't have to use that old style sifter, just get a bowl, a fine strainer, and just tap it through. That's all you need to do to sift. To this, we then wanna add our teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. And the powdered sugar once I get it ready, or not yet. <laughs> So the cream cheese and the butter is just blended and whipped really well. Yes. Right? Okay. And then we're going to add our powdered sugar a little bit at a time so it doesn't fly all over yes. you, right? <laughs> so we've slowly been adding the, the powdered sugar, our last little bit. So we're going to mix that in until it's light and fluffy. Right. Looks right. good? It looks good. Okay. So we're going to um, bring our cake layers over here and get it all assembled in frosting. All right. So Carol's just gonna go ahead and fill and frost the three layer cake with our cream cheese frosting. Easiest just to use a spoon, blop some on in there and with an offset spatula, just spread it around. A couple little tips while she's doing that. If you really wanna make sure that it comes out clean on your bottom edge, you can take strips of wax paper or parchment paper and put them just under the edge of your bottom layer. And then that way when you're done, sorry, when you're done frosting all around the edges, you can simply just pull those strips out and then you'll have a nice clean edge at the bottom. Fascinating. Another tip when you're greasing and flouring your pan, if you're worried at all about your cake sticking, an extra step you can do is grease your pan and then put cut around a parchment paper, put that in the bottom of the pan, stick that to the grease and then do your flour inside for the edges. Then you're sure that the bottom won't stick. All right, then we're going to finish off with the toasted pecans that we saved from the beginning. And there yeah. we go. Look at our beautiful hummingbird cake. Nothing left to do but eat it. Okay. So we're going to get our taste tester in here, Gene. Come on over here, Gene. He's going to taste our cake for us. Why, yes, I fly jet. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> okay, I'm really excited. It's very moist. Beautiful. Looks good. Why don't we go Thank ahead and you. try that, Gene? He'll be our taste tester. Tell us how it is. Ooh. Oh, yes, that is marvelous cake. 
Yes, is that I, the no. best hummingbird cake you've ever had in your it, life? It really <laughs> is. It's very, very good. Okay. Okay, stop. Let now me, say all this normally or I will... This is very good hummingbird cake. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> Hi, I'm Gene Wells. I'm a taste tester. <laughs> and this is a very good cake. Here, let me show you. No, oh, man, it's really good. I'm so thrown off, I don't even know how to wrap it up. Okay, stop. Now, let's talk correctly, Gene. One more time. This is very good hummingbird cake. I would recommend this to anyone. Not just Southerners. Not just Southerners, that's true. <laughs> so Northerners and Westerners, too. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for coming, showing us this southern dish. I'm very excited. It's, I can't wait to try it. I hope you guys will give it a try. Go to the website, nobonelife.com, to download the recipe for all of the ingredients and measurements. And give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.